this is something I've really wanted to talk about. It's been sitting on the forefront of my desktop. I've just been like, I got to talk about this on the pod because I got to get you on this topic, B. Network reliability and resiliency is finally a front burner issue. And Deano Goverts has this story. Okay, Broadband Nation Expo in Washington, D.C. What they're describing as Levin's Digital Pearl Harbor. I'm not sure, you know, what that whole concept is. But this is an interesting thing because we talk about this on my podcast, but my podcast only reaches, I don't know, maybe 1,000 to 2,000 unique viewers. And my channel only has 26 or so thousand subscribers. So the people that consume my content understand our position. We really, truly believe in our heart of hearts. Network reliability and resiliency is a front burner issue. It always has been and it always will be. But then you take, for example, what has happened in the last week or two be with Hurricane Milton, uh, Hurricane Helene, and these tropical storms, which are intensifying in magnitude and intensity, but they're also happening in more frequency. So we're getting stronger storms, more frequent storms. So these, these things are not changing. They're going to get harder. And now you're starting to see kind of like what we were talking about with the satellite connect connectivity, having redundancies, having backup plans for emergency communications and you know all these other secondary connections, right? The one thing that I want to mention, and it's, it's brought up here in terms of bead funding, is are we putting the correct funding to do two things? And that is protect infrastructure and build more resilient infrastructure, right? Because you can't have resiliency and you can't have reliability if you don't have a foundation of infrastructure. One of the things that you can celebrate about Japan is the fact that they have invested hundreds of billions of dollars into Tokyo's infrastructure, like for the country. And then obviously Tokyo is like, I think greater Tokyo is almost like 40 million people, dude. It's crazy, right? I mean, name a place bigger than New York, New York City, and it's like, it's, it's just a couple of places. You know, they've invested heavily into this infrastructure. And I think that's the principal aspect of this concept. Network reliability and resilient, resiliency comes in twofold. I got to protect and preserve the network and make it hard, like harden the network. And then I think also having the redundancies, the backup plans, and the emergency response to the repair and the rebuild, because that's what's going on in Florida right now. That's what's going on in North Carolina. Stuff got damaged, the trees, the infrastructure, the fiber, the, the electric. It all just has to be rebuilt. You know, so this has become, due to these recent storms, a front burner issue. B, we have been on this for a long time. How does this make you feel now seeing publications, articles, and Washington? the great Washington of the DC now thinking to themselves, maybe we need to focus as a front burner issue on network reliability and resiliency. Well, it's a, uh, it's a chicken that's coming home to roost um, moment. If I ever have seen one, that's for sure. Um, because we, we kind of take that stuff for granted every day. Um, the American people, the government, everybody just kind of takes for granted. The connectivity that we that we all enjoy, whether it's power or water or communications, um, those basic fundamentals, um, those fundamental pillars to any any society, um, we we often take for granted, and um, that's very unfortunate. I think it's probably time for the country to put significant investment into rebuilding and building out the infrastructure across the country. A lot of the stuff that's that's holding our, our country together, it's 100 years old plus, depending on where you are. Um, the South, maybe not as much because, you know, the Civil War, you know, pretty much destroyed a lot of Southern cities. Um, but in the Northeast area, for sure, there are a lot of places um, that have just very old infrastructure that needs to be rebuilt. And it's going to take um, investment from all three levels of government in addition to private financing. It's going to take 
public private partnerships in order to get a lot of the stuff done that we that we need to get done as a country. So um it's great that this stuff is being spoken about. Um I guess when the article speaks to it finally quote unquote being a front burner issue, I'm 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 guessing I haven't read the article, but I'm guessing the author is talking about entities outside of those that actually work in the industry. <laughs> Um, because the industry has been touting this for a long time and that's, to, that's not exclusive to just one carrier. Agreed. Agreed. Um, that's something that's being said for for years and nobody's really been willing to listen. And that includes the American people, um, collectively. Um, and so now it takes things like a pandemic, um, and hurricanes for people to wake up and kind of understand, Hey, well, maybe, you know, the industry has been correct the whole time. Maybe this is something that we need to think about. Um, some of the things that have been floated around, I don't necessarily agree with. But I do think it's probably time to start rebuilding our country. We haven't really had that moment for about a hundred years now. We're still driving on roads that have been, you know, originally designed and built 50, 60 years ago. We're still utilizing pipes that were built 80 years ago. Um, it's time to rebuild them. We need people. We need men and women who are, con you know, committed to, um, helping to get that done. Um, from a worker standpoint. Um, it's time. It's time to, to get to work rebuilding our country. Oh. Man, bro. <laughs> you know me, I'm all about infrastructure investment. I can't, I don't think you can actually move forward until you've reinvested to enhance whatever you had previously. Right. So like gen one, uh, uh investment. Okay, fine. It, it held up. It did its job. Gen two should be 10 times better. Right. And it needs to be future proof to a certain extent, not requiring reinvestment for a while, right? It, it, but it needs to be very good. So I, I agree with you. And, you know, the fact that now it's become a, a front burner issue, I mean, it took long enough, you know, that's kind of my, my take on it. 